In this first video on queuing systems, I'll do a general introduction and describe basic queuing systems and how they work. And in subsequent videos, we'll get into the analysis methodologies and how to actually use queuing analysis to analyze performance of uh, several real life systems. So basically, a queuing system consists of a server, a queue, and a set of entities and entities arrive to the system and if the server is idle uh, when the first entity arrives it immediately begins service if an entity arrives and the server is busy uh, the entity gets in the queue and so we see these types of queuing systems in real life uh, all of the time for example when you visit the anytime teller to withdraw money for example uh, the ATM in that case is the server and the customers uh, are the entities and so if you arrive and there's no one uh, currently working on the ATM you immediately start uh, service if there's someone in front of you you get in line and subsequent customers uh, get in line behind you we also see these types of si these types of systems in manufacturing systems where the server might be uh, a machine and the entities uh, are parts that require processing by the machine the queuing system is is characterized by a number of parameters first of all we have the arrival process and the arrival process describes how entities arrive to the system we have server parameters including the server capacity and the service process the server capacity indicates how many entities can be simultaneously processed by the server so you think about visiting an airport and getting in the ticket line and uh, there's t in a typical airport there's one line and there's a bank or a number of uh, ticket agents and so that number of agents uh, represents the the server capacity for the picture I have shown here my capacity is equal to one entity and there's one entity being served finally we have the service process and the service process describes exactly how entities are processed by the server we also have uh, the queue capacity uh, in other words how many entities can physically fit in the queue uh, for most queuing analysis problems most basic queuing analysis problems we assume that we have an infinite length queue and finally we have the queue discipline which describes how entities are prioritized in the queue the most common queue discipline that we deal with is called first in first out which is what we typically see in a service system so let's look at this queuing system on a timeline and see how uh, how the system actually works so what I have here is a timeline starting at time zero which is the time that we will start observing our system and our queuing system is in what's called the empty and idle state because the uh, there are no entities in the system hence it's empty and the server is idle uh, and not processing any entities so on our timeline uh, at time A1 is when our first entity arrived since the server was idle service begins immediately on entity 1 and we have the what's called the inter arrival time here denoted by I1 above our timeline at time A2 our second entity arrived when our second entity arrived uh, the server was busy so the entity got in the queue and we have the second inter arrival time uh, represented uh, above our timeline which is simply the arrival time of customer 2 minus the arrival time of customer 1 so this is sometimes referred to as the inner arrival time and sometimes referred to as the time between arrivals at time C1 we've completed service on entity 1 and so it departed the system and entity 2 moved from the queue into the server to begin service and on our timeline we now have the service time denoted here by S1 in this case it's equal the completion time of entity 1 minus the arrival time of entity 1 that's the service time at time S2 uh, entity 2 completes service and departs the system and so now there are, the server is idle and there are no entities in the queue and we have the service time for customer 2 in this case it's the completion time of customer 2 minus the completion time of customer 1 and the reason we're subtracting the completion time of customer 1 is because when entity 2 arrived the server was busy and so the time between uh, a2 and C1 was the time that entity 2 spent in the queue and S2 represents the actual service time once the entity uh, has access to the server so we continue our timeline here uh, at time A3 uh, customer 3 arrived again the 
the server was idle and so service began uh, immediately at time A4 uh, entity 4 arrived again the server was busy so uh, entity 4 uh, entered the queue and at time A5 the fifth customer arrived server still busy and now we have uh, the system in the state uh, at time A5 uh, there are three entities in the system one being served and two waiting in the queue at time C3, uh, customer 3 or entity 3's service time completes and entity 3 left the system. Entity 4 and 5 moved forward one position, so 4 began service and 5 moved to the front of the queue. And we now can compute the service time for customer 3, which is the completion time minus the arrival time. Again, it's the arrival time that we subtract because when customer 3 arrived, the server was idle and so service began uh, immediately. At time C4, customer 4 finishes and departs the system. Uh, customer 5 moves into service. And the service time on customer 4 is now the completion time of customer 4 minus the completion time of customer 3. Again, because when customer 4 arrived, the server was busy. And so customer 4 waited in the queue for customer 3 to complete. Finally, at time C5, uh, customer 5 uh, completes and departs. And so our server is now idle and our queue uh, is now empty. And so let me back up and go through this one more time um, and we can uh, get a better idea of what exactly is going on. So customer 1 arrives and begins service. Customer 2 arrives and waits in the queue. Customer 1 finishes and 2 begins service. The system is now empty and idle when customer 2 completes. Customer 3 arrives, uh, customer 4 arrives and gets in line, customer 5 arrives and gets in line behind customer 4, 3 completes, 4 completes, 5 completes, and now uh, our system is empty and idle. And so when we look at our queuing system parameters that we discussed before, the arrival process is represented by these inner arrival times. Uh, I1, I2, I3, uh, I4, and I5. The server capacity is equal to 1 because we saw the server could only process one entity at a time. The service process is represented by the service times uh, here S1, S2, S3, uh, and so on. The queue capacity, we didn't really discuss the queue capacity. We, the maximum number we ever had in the queue was two, but we didn't limit that in any way. And so in, for this example, we would assume our server, our queue capacity was, in, was infinite. And our queue discipline was first in, first out. Uh, when customers arrived, they got in the, uh, in the, uh, in the queue, and they are processed uh, in the order in which they arrive, which is, again, a quite common queuing discipline for uh, typical service systems. So with this type of system, queuing system, we're interested in uh, analyzing the performance of the system. And so in general, there are several common performance metrics uh, that we're interested in, in with systems like this. The first one is something that's called the server utilization. It's denoted by the Greek letter rho. And the server utilization represents the proportion of time that the server is busy. In this case, with capacity 1, the server is going to be either busy or idle. And rho, the server utilization, is simply the proportion of time that that server is busy. We're also generally interested in the average number of entities in the system, which we'll denote as cap L. And so the average number of entities in the system is, is an interesting uh, metric for uh, the the uh, the queuing system because it can dictate how many entities uh, you need to plan for if the, you're modeling a say a physical facility uh, you, you want to know how many entities you have to plan for because you have a physical uh, system to configure we're also generally interested in the average time uh, that entity spends in the system so an entity arrives and you'd like to know on average how long does that entity spend in the system so those are there there are several other performance metrics that we're interested in and in the second video we will pick up and uh, from here and discuss how we analyze uh, these common performance performance metrics uh, based on our queuing system